non-farm payroll added 253,000 jobs in April. Now that beat the forecast of 181,000 by a real big margin that so does this mean that the u.s economy would escape a recession forecasted by many economies what do you all think okay now just want to show you one thing right over here just hold on i'm bringing up the chart in a short while now just want to explain to you a bit right over here now this is me um who has been looking at this number for like I think easily about 15 years already and I just want to show you one thing whenever you see a a arrow right over here it only means one thing that this number is being revised now if I un open up and I open up and I'll open up all the way as much as possible until you can't do it that's the maximum allowed in 2009 but I've seen data much, much long, much, much earlier than this. Now, just have a quick look. This last year, October 7, was the like the first time in a long, long, long time we had not had a revision. The rest, look at this, every single one. And that's one more that's not revised. And uh, that's way back in somewhere, hmm, yeah, June 4th, 2010. One more time, it's not revised. And look at that. So if we were to, let's say you have 100 entries right over here, we are talking about a 98% of the time you have this data revised. So what does that mean is that, you know, is this data reliable? So that's the most important thing that I want to ask. So if you look over here, although this 253K is a good number, above 200,000, I think that alone is a good thing. Okay, we are not taking it. We just said it's above this. This this alone is a good thing. But, 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 but what made me uncomfortable here is the revision of the March numbers. You, April came in 253, good, but March, they revised down to 165,000. From 236,000, that is a 71,000 revision. This is not small because it represents 30% revision. It's huge. And uh, if you take this minus this, yeah, you get around here. So is this something that is brewing behind just to give some some uh, hope to the traders out there believing that this thing can go on and rise the the u.s economy would not go into recession and stuff like that so you have to take every single thing that is being said by the fed with a pinch of salt that's what i want to tell you guys okay now so let's let's assume this okay non-farm this is okay but we want to look into detail right over here we want to look into the jobs in detail okay this is increasing yes it's increasing what about layoffs that is also equally important and uh, a dive into the layoffs departments we saw this according to forbes more than 136,000 people lost their jobs this quarter that means from january february and right up to march and it has already surpassed the prior two quarters combined. That means from June right up to December 2022. Okay. From June right up to December 2022, that still the layoffs cannot beat the first three months of 2023. Okay. We have the tech and the manufacturing layoffs. Uh, led by Amazon, Google, Meta, Twitter. They already started last year and they are following up with this year with more layoffs. And soon we may, may have more banks following suit already. With CT already announcing on March the 1st, they're going to cut about 1% of its employees, the global employees. Morgan Stanley announcing 5%. So all this can actually continue and if you look at the the banking crisis it's still not over as yet okay 
it's still not over. The U.S. is in a very shaky position right over here. Now, bear in mind, Fed has already said that they still see jobless rates to reach 4.5% by the end of 2023, which means that more layoffs are expected right over here because they are going to keep the interest rates as high as possible, as long as possible. The longer they do that, they will create a lot of tension inside the economy. And do not forget, in the next uh, one and a half months too, we are going to see the uh, Republicans as well as the Democrats fight over again about the debt ceiling. Okay, in one and in a couple of months, yeah, the US is going to run out of money. And I will be very interested to see how they're going to deal with it. In 2011, that was the nearest it came. And uh, during that time, you know, the, the, the US almost defaulted and at the last minute they agreed to increase the debt ceiling that the whole scenario can play off this time and previously when that happened when they left it to the last minute the market actually corrected 20 percent so beware of all these headwinds that's going to come up in the u.s market okay so what does that mean for now so let's assume first thing first is that seventy-one thousand over here is a blip and one off Okay, it's just something that the Fed felt, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's okay. We we made a mistake, but right now it's cool. It's cool. It's two hundred fifty k increase already for April, so it's cool. Previously not so, yeah, but it's cool. But one thing is that wages also showed an increase of zero point five percent because I just not only we look at jobs, we want to see how strong are the wages, and uh, if you were to compare to previous month, it's 0.3%. That is a 0.2% increase. So that's a good thing. Uh, but one thing is that if you add both of these together, they can only tell you one thing is that consumers, they can withstand high interest rates for time being because they have jobs. We don't know how long that will last. I do not think it will last that long. And uh, if this continues, this will encourage the Fed to keep rates as high as possible as long as possible now the fed has already mentioned that they will want to keep the rates at uh at what it is let's assume that 5.25 percent is the last rate hike so 5.25 percent for the rest of 2023 okay so this is what the fed is hoping but yes as you know if you've been following this report over here what the market expects and what the fed ex expects never ever gel most of the time they don't okay so i'll be watching out for the may data in june and the data validity would then be called to question if we have a big revision again in the non-farm or a major drop in the non-farm number uh let's say how major um anything more than hundred thousand that would be a major one okay so this is something that we need to look forward for next month and have a look into detail to have an idea whether the Fed can continue with this uh, numbers that are there. You know, they are pumping up and pushing down at will. So what's next is that I think the easiest would be to understand based on the non-farm data, what is the next probability of the Fed? What they're going to do next? And what we can see from here in June, next month, and next to in next month here, there would not, you know, probably be no rate heights already because that's a 91.5% chance we would not see a rate height. And for a rate height, it's only 8.5%. There's no way in June that they're going to cut rates. So that is zero, just zero percent right over here. And in when it comes to July, it is about fifty eight point six percent chance they are going to uh, maintain the rates, and a thirty six point three percent chance they're going to cut by twenty five basis points. So I still think that uh, this number will increase when the, when it comes to May. So probably we will see two. Uh, two consecutive months of uh, 
the Fed maintaining the rates. But when it comes to September, that uh, relationship could change, okay? Because I'm not looking into November already. I'm going to draw a line over here. We are not looking that far because I do not think this particular area over here carries any significance uh, with the probabilities because uh, it's just too far away. And from now until then, there will be a lot of uh, uh, developments in the market and that could change. So right up to September, there we are seeing a 51.4% chance of a rate uh, cut. That means if that happens, that will be the first uh, the, what you call the Fed pivot. Now, for this to happen right over here, for that to happen, there's something bad will need to happen over here, from here to here. Okay? From now until September, something bad will happen. If there is this market crashing, uh, the stock market crashing, the housing market crashing, or loan uh, delinquency and, or such nature, then yeah that this probability will increase by then. Okay, so this is something that everybody has to take note. Okay, so um, like as usual, if you have any questions, just type in the chat and I will, you know, after the presentation, I will come and uh, deal with it, okay?